DIY Stampcrete, a world leader in decorative concrete. Presents Do It Yourself Decorative Concrete. For way too long, Americans have been stuck with brick pavers with all its maintenance issues as the only alternative to plain concrete. At DIY Stampcrete, we'd like to change that. Now, Brian and Daryl are neighbors and good friends. And when Brian wanted to replace his old stepping stone front walk, he checked on decorative concrete. But when he got a contractor's estimate, uh, he felt there had to be a more affordable answer. And with that, he discovered the do-it-yourself decorative concrete program from Stampcrete. And Daryl was also interested in replacing a small gravel walkway. Both were impressed with the unique DIY Stampcrete patented stamping tools and the authentic decorative concrete surface they produced. By going in together and splitting the startup package price and doing the work themselves, they brought their total cost down to about a third of that contractor's estimate. They bought the Fieldstone startup package, which gave them a good start. Now, these stamping tools can be used again and again with a virtual endless lifespan. DIY Stampcrete provided a detailed list of the other items they'd need. A lot of them they already had. Hammer, shovel, wheelbarrows, garden rake, quarter-inch cordless drill, forming materials, two-inch grade stakes, two-by-fours for forming, expansion joint material, 3M spray adhesive, two-and-a-half-inch drywall screws, level, a wooden handle for the release brush, a garden hose with a nozzle, roller cover and handle, a roller pan, and a tamper. Now they need a bull float. That can be rented or bought. They checked out the training DVD a couple times. And on day one, they were up and ready to go. With great stakes and string, they laid out Brian's walkway. By using a few of the forming 2x4s, they were able to square things up nicely. In addition to their startup package, they bought the popular DIY Stamp Creek sandstone integral color. For his walkway, Brian ordered two pails of color, then one pail of the charcoal release agent. And although it's the most popular, a medium brown is also available for a lighter look in the grout lines and detail. And last, they ordered one pail of the top coat. That's enough to cover up to 800 square feet. The individual costs of these supplies average 75 cents a square foot. Brian had a place to use the dirt that they had removed. However, the company that delivered the gravel said they would have taken it. DIY Stampcrete recommends you dig to a depth of 8 inches. That allows for a 4-inch gravel base and the 4 inches of concrete. It's recommended that you dig out another 8 inches beyond the forms for ease in stamping. Pressure treated 2x4s offer straighter, more reliable forms. Now they wanted the walk to have a width of 48 inches. They allowed for a slight pitch to aid water runoff. With the forms up, the gravel is placed down. You can buy bags of gravel at Home Depot or Lowe's. But the cost of stone delivered by a local garden center is much cheaper. Ryan had two yards delivered for $60. Earlier, they put up some tarps and some tape to protect the porch and the front entrance from the charcoal powdered release. Using the 3M spray adhesive, mount the expansion joint material 
Everywhere the new surface will meet up with an existing surface, like the porch steps and the driveway. By doing a practice dry run, you can use the painted dots to learn how the stamps fit together and the placement pattern. The 2x2, two 2 one foot grade stakes are placed every 4 feet, keeping the forms from bending. As you order the concrete, be sure to order the right mix design for stamped concrete using a small aggregate. Your concrete supplier should know the PSI you need for your area. And as for the slump, the driver that delivers your concrete will make that adjustment when he arrives for the delivery. Let the driver add one Fritz pack for each yard of concrete. This gives you extra time for placing the concrete. Brian ordered two yards of concrete. The driver put in the two pails of sandstone color. It needs to mix for from 13 to 15 minutes. Let's stop here for just a minute to let you know that if you have any questions before you start, there's a DIY toll-free hotline, 855-767-4055. The folks at DIY Stamp Creek will be more than happy to answer your questions. Both Brian and Daryl used wheelbarrows to place the concrete. the garden rake and shovel to get the concrete into the forms and keep it even with the top of the forms. Next, they used a 2x4, slightly wider than the walk, to screed the surface. Tapping the back side of the forms allows the concrete to settle next to the forms, leaving a smooth edge. It's the same as vibrating the concrete. This is where the bull float comes into play. It'll close up the surface as it smooths it out. The hand float that comes in the startup kit can be used around the edge near the concrete forms. And keep in mind, Brian and Daryl have never done concrete work before. And although their surface is not totally smooth, doesn't have to be. The stamping tools will take out any imperfections. When the concrete sets up to a time when you can stick your thumb in about an inch and a half before applying the release material and while the concrete is still soft, use the Groover tool and a 2x4 as a guide to put down a 1 inch deep groove or control cut every 5 feet. Now in this case, Daryl had a die grinder, so they made the choice to wait till the next day to cut in their control cuts. Again, now is the time to put in the important control cuts with the Groover tool, and do it before you apply the release material. They're using the release brush to get even coverage over the entire walkway. When you can get your thumb into the concrete about one inch, it's time to stamp. The DIY Stamp Creek Fieldstone stamps you receive will have the painted white dots and that'll help you match up the stamp placement with four stamps down, lightly and evenly tamp or use light foot pressure on each stamp and you can allow the stamps to hang over the forms. Move the first stamps, put them down in front of the last two. Oh, it's important to know that if you don't get a stamp placed correctly, don't panic and don't pick it up and try to place it again once it's down on the concrete. That's important advice because that will result in a double impression. Instead, keep going. The field stone surface is forgiving and the two small texture stamps and the roller tool will work well to touch up any mistakes. 
When the stamping is completed, use the small texture stamps and the grout roller tool to go back and fix any spots that need a touch up. It's looking good. That's it for today. Here on day two, they started by pulling up the forms. Next, it's time to remove the excess release agent. With a garden hose, start with a fine spray to rinse off most of it. The DIY Stampcrete release is user-friendly. It won't harm grass, shrubs, or plants. Using the release removal brush, scrub off the surface. Now two people work well here, one scrubbing and another with the hose. You might have to add some 409 or something like it to a pail of water to cut any excess release agent. Once you're finished, step back, take a look. Make sure that you've removed enough release. Now if it seems a little too dark, Remove more release with a brush and some simple green to lighten it up. If you like the way it looks, well, you're ready for the last step. Again, remember, if you want it lighter, just take off more release before you seal the surface. Brian and Daryl chose to wait till today to put in their control cuts. They measured, used a chalk line, and used Daryl's die grinder to make their cuts every five feet. At any time, you can reach out with the Stampcrete DIY hotline if you're not sure about something and have some questions or concerns. Now for putting the top coat on the new surface. This is the fun part. It's important to wait until that surface is entirely dry. Make sure there's no rain in the forecast. This is where it all comes to life with the top coat. Use a high quality one and a quarter inch roller. Let it dry for at least four hours, then roll on the final top coat. The popular sandstone color combined with the charcoal release agent delivered one super looking walkway. Brian and Daryl can take real pride in what they accomplished. The neighbors were impressed. They saved some serious money. They did a great job. And you can too. Well, let's do a quick recap. They measured and laid out the walkway. Removed the dirt down eight inches. Formed it out with pressure treated two by fours and two by two grade stakes to support the forms. Place and stamp two yards of stone. Order two yards of concrete with fiber for reinforcing. Have the driver add two Fritz packs, one for each yard of concrete to give them more finishing time. And added one pail of color for each yard of concrete. Have the two pails of color mixed on the truck for from 13 to 15 minutes. Use two wheelbarrows and two people to place the concrete. Used a 2x4 to screed the surface and a bow float and a hand float to smooth it out. Use the Groover tool to make the control cuts every 5 feet. Or as they did, use the die grinder the following day. Apply charcoal release to the stamps and the surface. Place and use the tamper or light foot pressure on the stamps. Remove the forms and with two people washed and rinsed off the excess release agent and rolled on the top coat to seal the surface. We set up a 10 by 10 foot box filled with sand to demonstrate how to place and move the stamps to create a do-it-yourself decorative concrete patio. With Ashler Slate, the key is to always have the notch in the upper right corner as you place the stamps. To stamp a 10 by 10 foot patio, you need six stamps enough to go across the surface, then have a stamp to start the second row. You're planning a 12 by 12 foot patio, you need seven stamps.
And as you can see, the stamps are placed up and across the row. Even in the dry sand, the stamps are leaving a strong impression. Your Ashler Slate stamps will have white dots on the upper right and lower left corner to assist you with placement. Here's the look you'll get. We use the sandbox for our demo stamping of a 10 by 10 foot patio with Arizona flagstone stamps. You need a total of six stamps for a 10 by 10 foot surface and seven stamps for a 12 by 12 foot patio. We first use the small texture stamp around the edges. Rotating the stamp like this varies the imprint. You can use the tamper for light tamping of the stamps or light foot pressure will work too. Either way, be sure all stamps are stamped and stamped evenly before moving them to the next position. Build the stamps up and across.
got good impressions even though this was dry sand. Here's the final look. Here's the way you would arrange a six stamp array for stamping a field stone 10 by 10 foot patio. Stamps such as field stone, ashlar slate, and Arizona flagstone can be purchased separately at only $169.95 each. These stamps can be used hundreds of times. Anytime you have questions, you're welcome to call the DIY hotline. There'll be someone there to give you the answers you need. DIY Stampcrete offers a choice of seven integral colors, silver, light gray, leather, tan, buff, sandstone, and beige. They can be combined with either two release agents there's medium brown and charcoal, and the top coat to protect and preserve the new surface. You can do it if you try, and the reward comes with stunning, do-it-yourself, decorative concrete like this. Now is the time to contact DIY Stampcrete.